Hey, this is hey. James and Jenny here at the kitchen table uh, doing our Sunday school lesson with you and uh, glad you joined. It's good to see y'all today. Hey, we've been missing everybody. We're looking forward to being able to get back to church pretty soon and do an in-person gathering. I uh, hope that we uh, will be more relational based and uh, as we get back together because uh, we've been dying to have relationships again, right? Uh, we've been in a study. Uh, this is the third week study of uh, messy relationships. And uh, today we're going to continue that talking about messy relationships. And uh, uh, you might be asking, well, well, how would you define a messy relationship? Well, let me ask you that question. How, how would you define a messy relationship. Uh, during this lockdown that we've been in, um, you've probably been in some kind of uh, tiff with somebody at your home or whatever, and and, uh, and so um, uh, so you, you understand about, hey, I've been offended, maybe I've offended somebody, somebody's got mad at me, I've got mad at somebody. So today we're going to talk about uh, the free, how to forgive, and um, that forgiveness restores and strengthens relationships. And and so, um, just in case you wanted to know, um, the the ad, several of the adult classes are using this book. Where let me get in this thing. There we go. And they're using this book in in a Sunday school. And we have several copies, uh, multiple copies at Old Saint George Baptist Church. Uh, they're paid for, and they were part of our Sunday school curriculum for last month, or, or the last quarter rather. And we want you to have those. And so, if you even just stop by the church sometime and get a copy. We want you to have some just so they won't go to waste. And uh, the new quarter stuff is already in. Uh, we did not call, contact them in time to be able to stop that when the pandemic and everything happened because we own automatic order and all. Uh, in, in, in the class that Jenny and I teach, we, we, we just finished a study um, uh, entitled The Search for Significance. So, so, and when we was looking for the next step to go, uh, one of the Sunday school, some of the couple of two or three Sunday school classes was doing this study in uh, and, and the Bible Studies for Life curriculum and uh, dealing with messy relationships, and it was just a good fit, and uh, so that's what we've been given there, okay? So the whole question we're going to talk about today, uh, because forgiveness restores and strengthens relationship, is this, what do you do when others do the unforgivable? Uh, man, have you ever been there? Uh, been there. Um, somebody said that, you know, the truth is, we, we, we will hurt others. Uh, we will disappoint others, and others will hurt and disappoint us, too. Um, it, it's, listen, it's easy to forgive somebody when, when it's just been a misunderstanding, uh, maybe it's been an unintentional mistake. It's, you know, they, they just, they were just a long kid and they weren't thinking and, and they did something and, and hurt our feelings or it, it brought hurt to us. Um, but, but you know what? It's, it, it is harder to, 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 to forgive somebody when, when they know better that they did it intentionally and they just, hey, I know this is going to cause you some hurt. I know this is going to cause you pain, but I'm going to do it anyway. Who cares? Because, you know, I'm master of my own world, right? And that's where a lot of us live. And so maybe Maybe it's a maybe it's something that somebody's done over and over and over again, and uh, and there is no remorse, there is no sadness, there is no sorrow from them, and uh, you know sometimes the hurt done is simply damaging, and it just um, damages. You know somebody what was the old nursery rhyme we used to say? Uh, Sticks and bones will. Um, um, what is? What, how did it go? Um, Sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. You know, and yes, yeah, sticks and stones, but but I've been hurt by words, and you have too, and uh, and, and all. That. You know, some of us have become because of the sticks and stones, because the hurtful words are over and over and over. Uh, we have got to the point that you know we don't know we want to forgive because it doesn't look, seem like it's doing any good, right? And uh, you know, and, and sometimes we start thinking, well, you know, well, if I say, well, you know, I forgive you, I, and let's move on. Uh, it's like saying, well, don't worry about it. It never even happened anyway. Well, it did happen. And so we do want to work, talk about that tonight. Because um, as we're going to look today, uh, Jesus forgave us. And, and that's the basis that we're to forgive others, okay? Excuse me a second. <coughs> Not coronavirus. It's just um, society's drainage, okay? And, uh, and um, uh, the setting that we're going to be looking at, and we're going to be in, in, in Matthew chapter 18 today, uh, in Matthew chapter 18, we're going to be in, in verse 21 and, and several verses following. In the first, in, in the verses before we, we get to the passage we're going to be at, Jesus has been dealing with, um, um, when people offend you, what do you do? And he's already given that, said, listen, if somebody offends you, then you go to them and you talk with them and you try to, try to just straighten it out. Uh, if they won't listen to you, then you take a uh, friend with you, uh, not to gang up on them, but it's a, it's a mutual friend, someone that they trust as well as you trust. Uh, to kind of mediate and help bring together. And if that doesn't happen, then, 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 
faith means just take them to the whole church and if he won't even listen to the whole body of people because they were doing defending then then treat them like an outsider it wasn't that you you got rid of them uh then you prayed for them and you and you did what you could to win your brother back or your sister back and and so jesus has just dealt with that in matthew chapter 18 verses 15 through 20 and and then he gets into a parable and he's going to tell a story here about a a man uh that um uh, did the unforgivable, okay? And uh, and Jenny's going to help us out here a little bit, okay? And uh, and, and she's going to read uh, Matthew 18, verses 21 and 22, okay? Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times. Jesus answered, I tell you, I tell you not seven times, but 77 times. Man, I tell you what, Peter Peter was a record keeper, wasn't he? And, uh, and things. So let's look here for a moment. In verse twenty-two, um, notice what it, notice what Jesus says. Um, I, I tell you, not not up to seven times, but the seventy-seven times. What he was saying is that you you forgive and you keep on forgiving. You forgive and you keep on forgiving. Okay. See, Peter had his own idea. Remember, Jesus. Peter asked Jesus, so "Jesus, let me ask you. Somebody, somebody messes up and, and messes with me. Okay. And how many times do I forgive him? Up to seven times. See, uh, he he had been taught by the Pharisees that um, and and the rabbis of his day that if somebody offended you, then then, then you forgive them three times for the same offense. You know, somebody uh, calls you a bad name, then, then you forgive them, do it again, you do it, 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 it up the third time. And then after that, you know, man, they were just home free, I reckon, not to block off or something. Else. I mean, you, you exasperate the situation, really, what you're going to do. And uh, and so Peter, uh, man, you know, the rabbis had to be, be generous. So, you know, I bet Jesus wants us to do something a little different. So so notice what he says, up to seven times. And, uh, and, 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 and also, he's just being generous. Not only the three times he's doing that, give me one more time for good measure, right? And uh, and, and stuff. And so uh, Peter uh, was realizing that Jesus said, "Hey, you know, uh, there's more to this." And so he's asking, uh, "Hey, Jesus, where do I cross this line? What is this line? Where do we need to draw this line?" Now the Bible is it talks about that forgiveness is supposed to be unlimited, but it's not saying that you've got to put up with an abuse. That's right. Okay. Jesus wasn't teaching mm -hmm. that Christians are to remain in abusive relationships. That's right. Uh, we're all going to face some hard times. We're going to have some hardships. Somebody's going to come along that's going to cause problems for us, and we're going to cause problems for somebody else. And so, uh, but because of our faith, we are not to resign ourselves to being dehumanized, mm -hmm. uh, endangered by another person. That is not what Jesus is talking about here, okay? He's not saying stay in an abusive relationship. No, he is not saying to do that. He said, uh, seek reconciliation. But be wise enough to go like, okay, I am being abused. I need to put some boundaries. I need to get some distance between me and this person. That's right. You know, because for, for give, forgiving uh, an abuser in your heart, here's what it does, okay? And, and I know some of this is just sewing chills up some, some of you spine. You, you're going, man, I, you know, this is tough. And it is because um, relationships can be messy, you know. But, but what happens when you forgive somebody who has treated you bad? Maybe it's an abuser. Maybe who somebody's always put you down or whatever. <clears throat> when you do that in your heart, um, and, and what you're doing, you're making peace with your past and you're moving forward, you're not allowing their abusive relationship and, and their abusiveness to, to chain you down to them. And so you're able to just kind of kind of move forward. Uh, Jenny mentioned just a moment ago about boundaries. So, so let's talk about that. So Jenny, um, what kind of boundaries should, should we set in place? Okay, we need to set boundaries when people are, you know, name calling, they're hitting, they're being abusive. Of any kind, you know, we need to set those boundaries and say, okay, we're going to have some distance here. I'm not going to stay right here and let you constantly punch me and punch me and punch me. So set those boundaries when you're being mis uh, misused, if you're being taken advantage of, etc. You know, make sure you set the boundaries. You know, in, in, in a sense, forgiveness is, is, is a high price out of, you know, some of you are bought. High price items before you paid a lot of price for it. And forgiveness really is in many ways a high priced item. Especially when you've been hurt physically. It's a, it's a high, that's a high price. You know, I mean, it's, this, this is, this is a high price. Maybe you've been hurt emotionally or mentally or spiritually. Uh, there, there's, there's people that hurt spiritually at church because of stuff going on at, at church and all. And maybe if you have, um, and then you go on, James, I really need to talk to somebody. Call Jenny and I. 
And we love to talk to you. We've helped many people, and we've brought many people through there and uh, through some of that. And and, uh, and so you know, but but forgiveness really is a high priced item, and uh, and we 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 want to help you with that because sometimes it's hard to figure out how do I how do I purchase forgiveness, so to speak, and uh, uh, and just using vernacular, not that you've got to buy it or anything, but how do you how do you do that? Okay, and so um, so so let's talk some more. So what is the goal of forgiveness? Well, that's a good thing. You know, forgiveness, a lot of times people say, well, um, you know, somebody had done something to you, and, and a lot of times you hear people say, oh, don't worry about it, it's just forget." Well, it was a big deal because you got hurt. Uh, you know, hurt feelings, and you've been distant between them. One of the things forgiveness is not doing, it, uh, it, forgiveness is not sweeping the matter under the rug and saying, well, out of sight, out of mind, okay? That's not what we're talking about. Right. And it's also, it's not ignoring the incident either. Uh, or, you know, pretending, you know, the elephant's in the room, but we pretend we don't see it. We don't want to do that. That's right. The, the goal of forgiveness is, is really an expectation of transformation. I, I read that. I like that. Uh, an expectation of transforma transformation. Can you even see it now, okay? An expectation of transformation. That's what the goal of forgiveness is. Uh, what, what do I mean by that? Uh, when, 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 when you forgive someone, when you start, look at somebody straight in the eye and say, I forgive you for what you've done to me, and you name that incident. You know, you hurt me. You called me this name. You dissed me. You um, did not invite me. You put me down. You ignored me or whatever. When, when you offer forgiveness to someone, what you were doing, you were expecting the offender will respond in a genuine repentance, which will produce a change in his or her behavior. Um, you know, uh, no matter how, what, what it is, when you say, I forgive you, you expect them to say, Oh, I am so sorry. And be genuine about it. Not just, oh, I'm sorry. You know, no, no. You want them to be genuinely sorry. And you're not doing it to convict them. You're doing it so you won't be chained. But that is part of a goal of, uh, of forgiveness. And we have to remember, forgiveness is not an emotional right. response. Mm -hmm. But it's a grateful response uh, that we're, you know, showing our Lord. Uh, he forgave us. And we need to forgive others for his sake. Uh, as an offering to him who has forgiven us for, I mean, you think about the things that we've done mm -hmm. and the people we've hurt, and he forgives us, so we need to forgive others. You know, if, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, if you've never made a personal conscious relationship uh, or decision to give your life to Christ and say, Christ, forgive me for my sin, I'm gonna come, you really don't have, um, I, I mean, you've got a choice in this. You, you can go and do what you want to. Man, I'm not going to forgive you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring hurt back to you like you've hurt me. And hey, I mean, you can go do that because you're not under the lordship of Jesus. But we who are Christians, we who have made a personal conscious decision to give our life to Christ, confess our sin, surrender our life to him, been buried with him, uh, crucified with him, buried and risen with him, um, we, we, we have two options. One is we can be disobedient to him and be out of his will, or we can follow his command and offer forgiveness. Again, forgiveness is not saying what you did is okay. Forgiveness is saying I'm expecting transformation here. Okay? And, uh, and, and all. And so, uh, we, Jesus continues the story. Je, we, Peter asked the question, okay, how many times do I forgive somebody? Because, you know, the rabbi saying we've got to do it three times. Jesus, how many times do you think? And Jesus says, hey, 70 times. And other translation says 70 times 7. And uh, he's not keeping the scorecard here. He's just saying, hey, keep doing it over and over and over. And so Jesus tells a story. And so, Jesus, Jenny, how about read the story for us? Matthew 18, verses 23 through 27. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. The servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him and said, and canceled the debt and let him go. Okay, so here's the story, okay? And so um, uh, so in there you had, um, uh, he, he won several accounts and began with the man who owed him 10,000 talents. Now, we, we don't use talents, okay? And the talent was really the highest denomination of Roman currency is what that was. Um, uh, the, the talent that, that, that um, one talent equaled like 10, uh, well, like 6,000 denarii. Again, we don't use denarii in, in us. Um, a denarii in, in that day, one denarii equaled one day's wages 
or it was 10 donkeys, okay, one day's wages or 10 donkeys. Uh, 6,000 denarii was the equivalent of having to work for 20 years, okay, it was the equivalent of, uh, of 20 years worth of labor. Um, now he owed how much? How much did he owe? 10,000 talents, didn't he? So it said he owed 10,000 talents. That means he had to work 60 million days to pay off his debt. 60 million days to pay off his debt. Now that's a long time. Uh, how many days is that? That's about 200,000 years. It, it, it's, it's, it, it would kind of be like one of us having to work, one person having to work to pay the national debt treasure, national debt of the United States of America. Uh, one person having to work to pay it back. It just can't be done, okay? And, uh, and all. And in that day, when somebody owed a debt that they could not afford to repay, the creditor had a right to do just what it says in here. He said, I'm going to put you in prison. I'm going to put your wife and your children in prison, sell all your possessions. Uh, and he was going to be in there until he paid every single debt and every dime off or he died trying. Okay? And uh, so the creditor had a right to sell the family into slavery. So so let's, rem let's remember what happened. So so here, here's the man. He owes more money than he can pay. It's going to take him, it's going to take him 200,000 years to pay back this this debt, okay? It's just an astronomical amount of debt. And so what does he do? Remind us what he did in verse 26. The servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. So he's begging. He got the begging servant. Man, he's just begging. Yeah, let me, don't send me there. I'll pay you back every time. Now, he's going to do 200,000 years. He can't do that. But but he's begging. Let me do it. Maybe he's thought, maybe a rich uncle is going to die or something. Maybe he's fixing to hit the lotto or something. I don't know. He, he, he's expecting he's going to be able to pay this. So he's begging, let me do this. And, uh, and so um, what happened in verse 27? The, ser the servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. So notice the, the forgiving master here, the forgiving Lord here. Notice what he did. He had he was moved deeply. He had compassion on him. He his begging and his pleading and uh, it moved him deeply. Uh, and then he he loosed him. Uh, the New King James says he loosed him. And um, in verse twenty four, remember back in verse twenty four, it says that he was brought in. To settle that debt, it probably was by force because he might have been avoiding the master because I'm owing this money. And so he's probably avoiding him. So he's brought in by force. He might have been in shackles and brought in, brought in there. And, and he's fallen down and, and he says, he says, I'll pay it back. Give me more time. And, and he was, so the master was moved by compassion. Uh, he loosed him from the, from the debt and then he forgave the entire debt that he was, that he was facing and, and all. Uh, and so, um, let me ask you. If that was you, what would have been your uh, immediate reaction? What would you have done? Jenny, what would you have done? Well, I, I tell you right now, I've been dancing in the street, okay? I mean, if somebody forgave all my debt like that, I'd be celebrating. Everybody would know about it. That's right. It'd be like hitting the lottery. <laughs> You know, and stuff, and so not, and we never played the lottery, so I, you know, but anyway, and so, you know, so, you know, celebrating and, and all, what would you have What would you have done? Yeah, man, we have been celebrate with me. And so, uh, so the story continues, and so we're gonna read verse 28, and then we're gonna skip down to verses 32 through 35, okay? And so, um, but let's read verse 28 first, okay? Because the story continues here. But when the servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. Okay, and so so the story can be, now we don't know if he went out purposely to find this this other fellow who owed him something. Um, the Greek really get, lends the idea that he was probably uh, just going about his business and he runs up on Bubba, okay, and uh, who who owes him who owes him some money now. Uh, remember, he owed what was equivalent to to two hundred thousand years to pay back. Okay, but this fellow that he ran into owed um, owed ten pence. Now again, we don't use pences in our in our monetary, but pence was the daily wage of a Roman soldier uh, or a day laborer. Okay, somebody who you just hire off the street, say, hey, I, I, I need some sheetrock done, or I need some sod laid, or hey, I just need some help over in the garden to cut the weeds or something other. Just a day laborer, and, and that was what you would pay a day laborer. Uh, for for their work. Now he owed ten pence. Okay, the, the fellow he went out and found on the street owed him ten pence. That was three months' salary, three months' wages. Okay, it could easily be paid back. Remember, he owed what two hundred thousand years worth of salary, but this fellow owed him three months' wages. If you would actually go back up and read in verses twenty nine and thirty, 
you will find that he, that the fella that owed him three months wages fell on his knee, begged and pleaded using the exact same words that he, that the first fella had used with his master who, when he owed him so much that he couldn't get on. He used those exact same words. You know, give me more time. I'll beg you. Don't sell me. I'll, I will be able to pay this back. And, uh, and, and so, uh, um, he used the exact same words that, that the other fellow had used. Okay? So let's pick it up now. Verses 32 through 35. And let's see the results. What, what did, what did the first servant do? Okay? Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all the debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured, and he, sh and he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. Now, if you notice something about this servant, the first servant, he, he had not been affected at all by the mercy of his king, of his master. He, he, um, he, he just missed a special, you know, and everybody owes me something. Um, and that's a messy relationship, okay? And, uh, and he's just modeling that for us, okay? And, and all. Now, some of you have been offended. Some of you have been the offender. Others have been offended. And, uh, some of you have been hurt. Uh, and, and some of you have been offended because of someone just like what we've been talking about here. And I know we talk in money, and now we're going to talk, talk a little bit about emotions and, and things like that. And, and, and all. But, but some of you have been hurt. Some of you have been offended because somebody did betray you. Or maybe somebody said something hurtful to you, some hurtful words. Um, uh, maybe, maybe they didn't keep a promise to you, and, and, and you got offended by that, and there's a messy relationship. Or maybe they went out and, 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 and they took, just absolutely told lies about you, you know? I don't know if you've been, ever been a recipient in the that, but, um, we can tell you stories. Maybe you've been bullied. Um, maybe you, maybe somebody you was trying to be their friend with, and, or maybe you have been their friend, and all of a sudden they just reject you, cast you aside, don't want nothing to do with you, and, and they say horrible things to you. Um, maybe, uh, maybe they, they didn't include you, you know, everybody else in the gang was invited to go out to eat, or, and, or come to a birthday party, or, or go on a trip, and, and they excluded you, and, and uh, they know they did it, and you know they did it, it was done in, intentionally maybe they treated you unfairly and uh you know but but some of you've had that in, in there and since you know you know what it's like to be betrayed or lied to or rejected bullied then don't do it to others you know what it feels like so don't go after and do it to someone else that's a good word you know the the, the first servant Got, got forgiven of everything. He went, uh, I mean, and he owed a tremendous amount. He went and found somebody that owed hardly anything. He knew what it was like to be forgiven. He knew what it was like to have compassion, but yet he did not show compassion himself. Uh, and, and as children of, of God our Father, uh, we're to forgive others. Uh, that means that, that it's a more than a one-time transaction. And I think that's what Jesus is trying to get there. You know, somebody's going to come back. You know, just think about us. You know, even though uh, his 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 um, disciple John, writing in First John, really talks about sinless perfection, uh, he also said, "But if we sin, uh, he knows that we're going to stumble and, uh, and and everything." So, so forgiveness is not a one-time transaction, and it's not always easy. Somebody might do it over and over again, and it's not always easy. It is costly, and, and uh, you know, look what it costs Jesus. Look what it costs God to forgive us for for the way we treated Him and the, the the sinfulness that we were. It cost the life of His Son Jesus, and and if Jesus Christ can forgive us, mm -hmm. He also is telling. Listen, He does forgive us, and and He will empower us through His Holy Spirit uh, to to extend the same forgiveness to others. It's not saying what you did was okay, and let's just forget about it. It's, again, that expectation of transformation. I'm willing to let it go. Are you willing to let it go also? So how do we do this? That's a good question. You thought you'd never ask. <laughs> uh, let me, let, let's give you three things, okay? Uh, first thing you want to do, uh, you, you will have to evaluate yourself, okay? Evaluate yourself. So the question is, do you need to forgive someone? Okay? Do I need to forgive someone? Have I offended someone? How someone offended me? Okay, so where are you in the forgiveness scale? Okay, which one are you, the offender or the one that's been offended? At some point, we will be offended. 
I mean, it's just a matter of time. If it hadn't happened lately, it will happen, okay? And at some point, we will be the one that was the offender. And somebody's going to bring it up to us, and we're going to go like, what? I did what? I, You know, you may not even remember it. You didn't think anything about it, but you're going to offend someone. So which am I, okay? What do I need to do? Because maybe as we've been talking today and teaching today, maybe the Holy Spirit's been revealing something to you that, that you realize. And so evaluate yourself. And if you're going, I don't know if I have or not, then why don't you just ask God? Because he'll tell you, God, I don't know about this. I need some wisdom in this situation. He'll tell you. And then so after, after you evaluate and, and say, okay, have I offended? Have I been offended? You might need to take the small step, okay? And uh, and, and taking a small step means, it, it, what, I, what I'm meaning by that is, you recognize that you have been, you, you've been offended. You didn't offend somebody. Uh, you, you, you did everything right. You, you was in, in the right place, right time, but, but, but some knucklehead came along, okay? And one of the three students came along, poked you in out of all, something other, okay? And, uh, and you've been offended. And so what small step can you take to go and extend uh, the, the offer of forgiveness, the offer of expectation of transformation that, that you will say, hey, um, I'm sorry, you know, uh, you, you offended me, and, uh, and I, I, we just need to get this worked out. And, uh, and, and what, what um, small step can you take to there? You might have to take a larger step. And uh, so let's talk about a large step you might have to take. The large step happens when you realize you are the one who did the offending. Uh, like I said, you may not remember it, but it's been brought to your attention. Somebody's come up and told you, the person themselves may have told you, hey, you know, when you did this, when you said that, it hurt me. And you're sitting there going, I have no idea. I, I did not intend for it to hurt you. But that's a large step because then we have to admit that, hey, we messed up. And that's the hard thing for us to do is, you know, to realize that we've messed up. Uh, now, it, you've offended this person. Uh, you go to them, you ask them to forgive you. Now, you may not be best friends ever again. I mean, they may, you know, you ask for forgiveness, they for, they say they forgive you, but your relationship may never ever mm -hmm. be the same again. And so, uh, and you might not be best friends again, but, uh, you've gotta let go of your past. You can't let it chain you. Mm -hmm. And if you just, to go like, oh, well, yeah, I know I hurt that, that person, but I'm not going to say anything. It's like a chain that's attached to you. It's ch hanging on to you, and it'll just stay there. It doesn't just magically go away. So forgiveness in, a, in this situation often will set you and, other, and the other person free because mm -hmm. they're chained, you're chained, and when you make it right, then you're, you're set free. And, and it's amazing what happens, even though it, it, you may think, oh, well, that was 30 years ago still go and seek mm -hmm. forgiveness. And so, you know, what, what you want to do, you want to evaluate yourself. You know, where have I been offended or where have I offended? If I've been the offended one, let me take a small step and, and, and just offer a, a small offer of forgiveness and say, listen, I'm sorry uh, you offended me and I won't offer you forgiveness and, and you expect any transformation there. But maybe you need to take a large step uh, and just what Jenny was saying maybe uh, you you realize God's saying hey you you messed up here uh, every, both of you was joined back and forth but you crossed the line more you know you crossed the line you crossed the boundary and uh, and you caused the major hurt here and so uh, so you need to take that larger step and go and uh, and say you know swallow your pride and go and say listen um, you know I, I want us to restore our relationship and, and again offering forgiveness for what you said and, and saying listen I'm sorry for what I did and I'm asking you forgiveness because I, I won't. And, and again, you, it's that expectation of transformation that's going to happen. That they're going to say, "Hey, yeah, uh, let's put this behind us and let's move on." And uh, and, and that's what you want to happen, okay? Uh, the, the parable that, that we have talked about today about the two servants, um, you know, helps us to understand that if we for, refuse to forgive, uh, we really end up in a prison. And uh, uh, but but faith in Christ, true faith in Christ, is really transformative. It it, it sets us free. Uh, and and what what happens? Forgiven people forgive. 
Forgiving people, forgive. Listen, hurt people, hurt people. Forgiving people, forgive people. Okay, That's right. and and stuff. And so those who reject God's offer of forgiveness, uh, there's a prison of hell. There's a prison called hell. That um, if you if you say, hey, I don't want God's offer of forgiveness. I'm fine like I am. Um, then then there's a, there's a prison of hell that you get to spend uh, for all of eternity. And God doesn't want you there. That's why this this is there. You know, sets. You know, He wants you to set you free. Okay, and uh, but for those who God has forgiven who forgive others there is a freedom from the prison i like what somebody said listen to this those who god has forgiven and who forgive others there is a freedom from the prison of an unforgiving spirit see when we forgive others we set others free and we also set ourselves free so we can all live in the joy of God's grace and the loving fellowship of his family and in fellowship and perfect peace with one another as he wants us to, okay? Relationships are messing. And there's going to be times that you're going to have to offer forgiveness. And there's going to have to be times you're going to have to ask for forgiveness. Make sure you do it. Because forgiving people forgive. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, does not mean you're going to be best buds ever again. But it does mean I'm going to set you free. I'm going to be free. And we're going to walk free and walk in Christ. Okay? Let me pray for you in our relationships. Okay? Father, I thank you so much for uh, being able to, Jenny and I being able to teach today the, the lesson on forgiveness, strength, this relationship, and restored relationships. Father, we've all been offended. We've all had hurts. We've all had things that, that we wished would, never would have happened to us. And Father, because we know that, help us not to do that to somebody else. And so, Father, if somebody has done hurt to us, may we offer them forgiveness. May we take the small step and go and say, you know, that, that hurt me. Um, and, and, and I'm so over it. I'm past it. But I want you to know that I forgive you. Because they might be wrestling with it. Uh, but go and offer that. Father, there might be there might be some of us that needs to take the big step and go and say, listen, what you said to me was not right. And I said things that I should not have said. I did things I should not have done. And I'm going to ask you to forgive me because I caused this to escalate and I caused the breakdown of the communication. Forgive me for it. I caused the messiness in my, in our relationship. And Father, you promised that you, that we won't have to do that alone, but you would walk with us. And so, Father, as we represent you, may we represent you well as we offer forgiveness that will strengthen and restore relationships. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, if we can help someone, our, our uh, emails on here, uh, telephone numbers on here, and uh, use that and, and contact us because we would love to, to sit and talk with you and help you to, to, to get to that point of either taking small steps or large steps. And if you need some of us, one of us to go with you, guess what? We'll do that And uh, because we love you and we want to help you, okay? Thank you for joining us. See you next week. And again, if you want one of these books, uh, just stop by the office or holler at us and we'll get them for you, okay? See you next week.